And the most terrifying question of all is, are you ready for hell? That's kind of an offensive statement to make, isn't it? Hell. Christians don't talk about hell very often. As a matter of fact, you won't hear it in the average church. We don't talk about hell. But Jesus Christ, the most loving person, the most kind, the most gracious person that's ever been born on this planet, spoke more about hell than all of the Bible writers put together. And one thing Jesus made absolutely perfectly clear is he said most people are going to hell. That's a terrible thought, isn't it? Jesus Christ said it was a broad road that leads to destruction. Jesus said this. It leads to hell, but he says it's just a narrow path and a narrow gate that leads to life. And he said few people find it. So what is hell like? If I would pull this campus, I'm convinced that many would say, well, hell's not really that bad of a place. My friends will be there. And where my friends are, that's where we party. We have a good time. We have lots of alcohol. We've got wild women. We got sex. And in hell, we're going to get to do all of that. There'll be no rules and no Christians to bother us. And God won't be there. It'll be a pretty nice place. But folks, you'll be wrong. You'll be wrong. God will be in hell. The wrath of God will be in hell for all eternity. Hell is not a temporary place. It's a real place. And Jesus Christ described it more than once. As a matter of fact, it's so terrible that the words he used barely can describe the horrors of hell. He said it's a lake of fire. Can you imagine a lake of fire? But not just any fire, an unquenchable fire. The fire doesn't go out. And Jesus Christ said there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. They'll be crying in hell. How many of you like to cry? Have you ever had so much pain or anguish, either physically or mentally, that all you could do was cry? Was that pleasurable? Of course not. And this is what hell will be like. It'll be the norm in hell, crying, weeping. There'll be no comfort there. There'll be no joy there. There'll be no companionship there. There'll be no light there. There'll be no love there. There'll be no grace there. It's a place of outer darkness. And the worst thing about hell, there's no death there. You can't escape it. And perhaps as bad as that, there are no exits in hell. It's permanent. It's eternal. So who goes to hell? Who goes to hell? We like to think, well, Charles Manson, he'll be in hell. Adolf Hitler, he'll be in hell. He killed 11 million people. He'll be there. And then we have trouble coming up with many others that'll be in hell. But the Bible says sinners will be in hell. As a matter of fact, it says there'll be religious people in hell as well. Those that think they can be right before God by their good deeds and their own moral action, that they're good enough to go to hell, they'll be there. So if we've all sinned, the Bible says we've all sinned and offended a holy God, that means we all deserve hell. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. We all deserve hell. We've earned hell. The Bible says the wages of sin what we've earned is hell, it's destruction, it's the wrath of God, it's death. And there is a judgment and God will examine our lives and he'll see we've offended him, we're at war with God, we break his commandments, it's worthy of hell, so how are we going to escape? Once you enter hell, there is no escape. But how about now, the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. There's salvation available today. There's a way to not only avoid hell, but have fellowship with the God that's given you life. The God that's given you your eyes. The God that's given your hearing. The God that's given your family. The God that's given your talents. There's a way to have fellowship with this God. 
but we can't have it with our sins. So how are we going to be rescued from the wrath of God? God in his kindness and his grace and his mercy says, I will provide one way at great cost, at an amazing cost. And I will demonstrate not only my love and my kindness and my holiness and my, my grace and my wrath, I will demonstrate it through the one way. And his name is Jesus. He lived among us 2,000 years ago. He lived a life I couldn't live. Perfection, holiness, righteousness. They could not convict Jesus of even one sin. But they crucified him anyway. If we were there, we would have yelled with the crowd, crucify him. And they did. They put him on a cross. And there he would shed his blood. He would suffer at the hands of evil people. He would fulfill all the prophecies of the Bible. The Messiah would die in this manner. And there he would take upon his body my sins. He would be a substitute. Can you imagine that? Someone taking your place, something you deserve, something I deserve, because of his kindness and love for me. And he would pay the price. He would be sin for me. He would be a curse for me. And while he was on that cross, the wrath of God should have been towards sinners that are crucifying his son. But what happened? The wrath of God is poured out on the Son. Do you understand that he withstood the wrath of God on that cross? Because that's what I deserve. He died and he rose from the dead. He's alive today to prove that sacrifice is accepted. So does everybody go to heaven because of Jesus? Jesus said, most people are going to hell. But he said, if you trust in me, if you believe in he, me, if you receive me as not only Savior from your sins, but Lord of your life, it's a repentant faith and trust. And you know where it comes from? It comes from God. God gives you that in your heart. He changes you. He transforms you. You become a Christian, a true believer, a disciple of Jesus Christ, a follower of him, and your affections are different. And you begin to grow and mature as a believer. And your goal and your motive in life is to honor the God that's rescued you, the God that's given you life. And one day you'll have eternity in his presence. And he walks with you. He guides you. He gives you direction. He gives you power to live a godly life. But folks, it'll cost you something. It'll cost you. You name the name of Christ. You receive him as Lord and Savior. And you tell your friends on this campus, you know what's going to happen? They're going to mock you. They're going to laugh at you. They'll probably hate you. You'll be marked. No longer will you be part of the group. You won't be invited to the outreaches or the, the parties on campus. You're not wanted. You'll be hated. Your girlfriend might walk away from you. Your boyfriend might leave you. Your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad might cut you off. That's the price. And one day, in this country, United States of America, it may cost you your life to name the name of Christ. That's the cost. That's the price. It is a gift that will cost you everything to trust in Him. But this God changes you. You become a child of God. You're reconciled to the Creator. Hell is not your destiny. Heaven is your home. And He will give you power to live the way he would have you live and you will glorify him with whatever you do you can become a scientist you can come I'm a welder that's what I do I make airplane parts but you may do be a doctor a pilot you might even pick up trash to the glory of God you live your life to glorify him and you try to reach your friends and you try to reach your family that's the meaning of life to know God and to know that tonight if you would die Flip on the light switch. After you've taken a shower, a jolt of electricity goes through your heart. It's over. You're, you're dead. Your heart stops. You're 20 years old. It's over. I didn't think it's going to happen. But if that would happen, you'll go to heaven. You'll be with God. You'll go to with the people of God. And the Bible says God wipes away every tear. No more pain. No more suffering. No more, no more death. No more sorrow in heaven. 
that's your home. And I'm gonna challenge you folks. The reason we're here is we care about you. I care about where you spend eternity. I want you to think about this message. It's a message from God. I want you to embrace it, to receive it, to be changed, to become a Christian and to follow him. And you have life eternal. I hope you do well in your school. I pray that God will bless you, that he will give you wisdom and understanding. I appreciate you listening. May God bless you.